I'm Alan Robarge, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Welcome to Improve Your Relationships, where I like to talk about attachment injuries and healing attachment trauma. And on this video, let's talk about family and family relationships. And the content here, the theme, coincides with the theme of the community membership website of the same title, Improve Your Relationships. And within that community, we have a suggested weekly theme uh, to help focus and structure the conversation. And this video is about week number three. Let's talk about family relationships. And I wanted to explore a couple ideas about uh, the bias and judgments that we might have against family, very specifically if you came from a family where your experience was not terribly positive uh, and that we might actually find ourselves being anti-family. Uh, and I have noticed this bias within myself as well as it seems that for those who don't have a family or prescribe to family culture, you can very much feel like you're an outsider. Uh, that uh, obviously, understandably, to have a family and to be immersed in a family is quite uh, time consuming and uh, really your main focus. And included in that, uh, spending so much time focused on your family culture is you're tapped into a greater culture that supports family. So family style restaurants, family vacations, uh, uh, family friendly outings, uh, getting together with other families. And understandably, it's totally normal, makes sense. Well, of course, you, if you're gonna do something, you wanna do something where everybody is you know, able to participate. However, this also creates this insulated experience where there's an assumption that the only way to operate and to be and to interact and certain ideologies, certain outlooks on life are then all channeled through this particular lens of being in a family. And uh, sometimes that lens equally comes with a bias the same way that I had acknowledged we could also have a bias that is uh, anti-family or wanting to be outside of that particular culture. Now, it's also possible that you are outside by right of just not having a family. So there's not a sense of choice uh, or you could, you know, engage with friends or, you know, do family things. But if, if you find uh, that sometimes this sense of family is alienating, and it's mirroring and linking to how you felt alienated in your past in your family. It's very possible then that this idea of finding family, creating family, or entering that particular culture of, of, of taking on the identity of being a parent, uh, taking on the identity of, of uh, valuing family uh, in a more traditional sense, that you would not want to do that. So in a way, it's very polarized that there seems to be certain people, a certain group of people who have some attachment injury, some attachment trauma, and they know that it was created within the context of their family system, and they are very much compelled to do something different. And that their idea of being a parent themselves uh, was not challenged in the sense of doubting uh, or creating confusion around being a parent. And so they enter family uh, life, enter parenthood with a sense of wanting to do something different and a real sense of being able to do something different. Now there's also another camp of people who take the opposite of approach, which uh, says they're a bit cautious about becoming a parent a bit cautious about taking on, you know, creating a family uh, lifestyle, a family system where they are going to invite certain struggles and certain dysfunction that they grew up with and or need to confront some of those old patterns in order to change it in their current immediate family. And that that challenge might be 
just too overwhelming, too off-putting, or maybe even distasteful. So we're noticing that we have choice here, but sometimes the choice can feel a bit reactionary as opposed to making a conscious decision of what's actually possible, that we realize that we have these biases. So if you create an exercise, if you, if you take the, the word family, say a family is, and you just free associate, you know, family is the, you know, family is a sense of belonging. Family is, um, family is um, um, being together on a, a regular amount of time. Uh, uh, family is about routine. Family is focusing on uh, uh, everyone participating, you know, whatever your beliefs are. And then you could do the opposite and say a family is not, you know, a family is not this, a family is not that. And if you just list your free associated ideas and then you can go back and circle the ones that have some kind of charge for you and uh, seem to uh, uh, call your attention. The idea is that if you created, if you started from scratch to create your own uh, understanding of family that's not as influenced by either your bias to repel and stay outside of family or your bias to uh, uh, move into family and or the extreme of that to feel that you're stuck and that you have to have a family. Uh, some people perceive that in, due to the life path, the course of developmental maturing life path, that having a family is the only option and that's you know what you focus on is becoming a parent. Even that can be uh, stifling or that could feel limiting if it's not your choice. So family, this idea of family is a really um, challenging, it can create a challenge to, to do this exercise uh, to see how your biases around what a family is supposed to look like, how you're supposed to behave, what it is supposed to accomplish, and you're relating to it as a uh, lifestyle or as to enter that culture. It's, it's not something you can do lightly. You know, you, it's, it's very challenging to, uh, to participate in family part-time. It's generally a, an immersive experience. And then that brings us to, of course, many of us know this idea of family of choice uh, and creating your own family where it's not about biological uh, uh, family members, but looking at, well, how do you create a depth of relationship where you uh, have friends who come together and realize that the, the quality of your friendship is that you want to create some commitment to each other in the sense of being a family. Now, that too can sound inviting and that too, however, has some limitations or challenges because everyone still needs to, uh, one of the, the uh, pros and cons to being uh, connected to people through right of blood and biology and uh, your, your biological family is there is this real sense of you can't really get away from each other. I mean, you could really, you could decide to, to, to stop interacting with your family members. But for uh, many of us, it, it feels like, well, I'm still related uh, to family. I'm still uh, biologically, it, it, it creates this added uh, way of staying connected. And so for people who create a family of choice, sometimes you don't have that uh, glue uh, that keeps us together. And sometimes those scenarios, even out of the best intentions, fall apart. So for this week, because we are talking about family, I'm really thinking of the polarities, the extremes between family and non-family, uh, immersing yourself in family culture and then being anti-family, and how that there are a number of judgments that come up um, to, 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 uh, with regards to how you want to uh, move forward in your life and interact with family. Many of us, don't really come from a place of choice. We come from a place of obligation or by right of family being imposed on us. 
and that it's just something you do, it's something that you have to do. Uh, there's a, there is a sense of uh, duty, uh, an obligation around obviously caretaking if you're in, in one of the roles of, of helping each other out. So um, we're trying to discover, at least for me, what I'm reflecting on is where is there a sense of uh, freedom around choice and not to get bogged down in the judgments and the polarities of what family means or doesn't mean. There, it reminds me there was this cafe bakery in Chicago where this, uh, this polarity that I'm referring to, the family versus anti-family culture, uh, really played out in a, in a neighborhood drama. And it was the kind of thing that would be in a, I feel like in a, you know, a, a teenager's novel or, or a short story, you know, intended for teenagers. It's like, you know, the, the town, the, ang the people, the community people are angry. And what they're angry about, they're angry over um, uh, strollers for baby, baby carriages. And this is this big brouhaha over, there was this bakery cafe and it was very small and they had wonderful pastries and wonderful breakfast items. And it was a cute little quaint boutique place. And uh, it had a bit of a, um, at least for me, I'm gonna say this, I don't know if this is totally true, but it felt a little snobby. But if, you know, that's, you know, I say that in all the, you know, in the good way. It just was a fun little getaway to go get a cup of coffee and have one of these really great, you know, pieces of cake or whatever they're offering. And there seemed to have been a, uh, some local um, mothers with baby carriages and strollers who during the day, understandably, they want cake too and they want a place to hang out. So they would arrive, but because the place is so small, the ba the carriages took up extra space and made it difficult. And then with the uh, number of children that were there, it became like playtime and it became like a daycare center and it was very loud. So the owner, uh, made some kind of not terribly skilled or pleasant uh, uh, announcement to essentially uh, tell these mothers to, uh, you know, you need to control your kids if you, if you don't have people, you know, children behaving appropriately in this restaurant or in this cafe then please do not come back. So the word got out. These mothers, of course, felt, uh, you know, rejected or hurt or thought it was inappropriate. And then so they wrote letters, but then there was this huge uproar, not huge, but there was, a, there was, it seemed to go on, I think, you know, for like weeks and weeks of other than the, ca the people who totally sided with the owner of the cafe wrote letters and the owner posted all the letters in the window. And I don't remember if um, he was so generous to post everybody's letter or if he's just posting the letters that was supporting his case. Um, but I was struck, and this is true of many people, surprised at the, 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 act, the, pow, the activation of the charge of, of getting your buttons pushed. And it seemed that many people in the community had an opinion about, uh, you know, yes, baby carriage, no baby carriage, yes, stroller, no stroller, yes, your kids are welcome anywhere to be kids and to play, no, you're disruptive. And, and in this moment, the reason why I'm offering the story is not to argue, you know, one way or the other, if we, you know, how, where we fall in the actual, that, that example, but more to point out that it was so, it was a, it was so perfect of a way to step back and just see how many people participating in that conversation were coming from their bias about family. And they were coming from their association, their, you know, whether they're conscious of it or not, projecting their ideas onto what a family is supposed to look like or be like, how you're supposed to behave, um, how a parent is supposed to, you know, behave in public with the child. And, and if you, again, back to this idea for people who feel that they're so outside of family culture, 
even being very outspoken and saying, well, they don't even want to want that to be part of their own experience and having this strong boundary to say, well, no, don't come to the cafe bakery. Don't don't bring, you know, uh, all the kids to to, you know, play, uh, you know, while I'm trying to read my book or have my coffee coffee. So um, it's a good example at just how um, activated we can become and we, we immediately have a strong point of view when we think about family. So this is your invitation for this week, week number three for the community membership um, website uh, to participate is to really reflect on what does family mean to you and what does it not mean? And how do you uh, use, how, how do those biases and those judgments influence how you create connection with your family members or how you create your own family. And uh, perhaps if you err on one side or the other of that polarity, maybe explore uh, the other side. The last thing for me that I want to explore related to this is just really looking at um, in, in doing this video and reflecting on the content for this video is really thinking about um, I have an association of isolation with family, very, very much about do your own thing, uh, you, you know, be self-contained, be self-entertaining, um, 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 really focus on, so, so there's, it's sort of this isolation idea is antithetical to some of the um, cultural explanations of family, of camaraderie and closeness and belonging. And here I have some history and awareness of how family also links to isolation. So my challenge for this week, what I'm looking at as one of my goals for a self-directed healing path is to really uh, uh, interact with that idea of isolation. And what is, what is the opposite of that in family? And not in the idealized fantasy sense, because as much as we can create, we can idealize a partner, we can idealize, idealize a romantic relationship. And we think that that ideal, we think that that romantic partnership is really going to deliver us and in the most extreme sense if you're thinking codependently will be your savior and will bring you happiness well we do the same thing with family or many people do this idea that well once you have a family well then you're needed and once you have a family well then you're loved and once you have a family then you you finally are experiencing a sense of belonging and it's so incredibly painful for many people who they believed that and then the experience of being in their family fell short and or ended or changed or life happens and surprises you that it just doesn't look like you thought it would look. And that's also part of, you know, the, the cultural, the romantic narrative of, you know, two beloveds, you know, being able to merge and become one also oftentimes links to part of that narrative is to then create children and have a lovely, amazing, wonderful family where there's this strong sense of belonging and, uh, you know, th you know, th we can look at all the, uh, 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 Hallmark Christmas cards or all the, all of the, um, kind of, um, um, idealized imagery of what a family is supposed to be. And even that can feel really alienating if you have this idealized idea in your mind, but then you look at the reality of your family and your family life and you realize, well, that's not even close. So I, I'm interested in being grounded in a realistic view of family, not the assumed idealized idea of what a family is supposed to deliver, uh, but how do we keep it? I, I often talk about romantic relationships, partner relationships, really needing to be ordinary and to counter the romantic narrative and all of the crazy fantasy thinking that comes with putting a partner on a pedestal and thinking that your partner is really going to deliver a, a giant package of happiness with a big bow on it, that instead of that gift, we would just want, uh, you know, something a little more reasonable that doesn't even have to be framed as a gift, but just framed as some kind of realistic, ordinary experience of family in the same way that we think about a realistic, ordinary experience of partner relationship and how this idealized way of thinking of what family is supposed to be 
very much can set us up for the disappointment and continued grief of realizing, well, I don't have that. So just repeat in closing, biases, the polarity, uh, what you want family to be, family of choice, how you define it, and then also looking at how we idealize it and how do we not idealize that. And if you don't have an idealized view of family, then what is a more realistic view? I hope that this is helpful uh, in the uh, community membership site. We are talking about this. We're dialoguing about this. This is our focus for this week. Um, thank you for listening. If you want to join the community, please do check out alanrovarge.com forward slash community and also subscribe to this YouTube channel uh, for more videos just like this. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.